All right, so when you go about investing in mutual funds, you have two options. You can either purchase uh, directly or uh, you can directly or on your own or you can go to a mutual fund distributor. Uh, who then helps you in picking up uh, and uh, investing in the right fund for you. Now, these intermediaries play a vital role in the world of investment, be it stock market, open market investments or even mutual funds. So, today on The Money Show, we will discuss uh, all that you need to know about these uh, intermediaries and for that, we are joined by Radhika Gupta, MD, CEO at Elvice AMC and Sanjay Shah, MD, Prudent Corp. Uh, good evening and welcome to the show. Uh, Radhika, uh, first question uh, to you. Let's uh, understand the role of intermediaries from an AMC point of view and from an investor's point of view because in recent times uh, we've seen the industry has gained uh, a lot from it. Even uh, the investors post-pandemic have got uh, more awareness about uh, uh, equity markets and investment in equity markets through uh, mutual funds. So uh, how do you actually read this, uh, this kind of an interest? Is it only the interest in the equity markets or we are also looking at the financial literacy which is the bigger goal so i think kavita firstly thank you to your team for touching on a very important uh, issue of intermediation which is less talked about uh, see as a brand as utilized mutual fund we have always had the campaign advice zaruri hai which talks to the role that intermediation and financial advice plays in an investor's journey you know post covid especially more and more investors are at least aware of mutual fund investing want to create wealth in the markets but many times when we talk to them they don't know how they don't know how to get started they don't know how to choose from a bevy of mutual fund products that are also increasingly getting more varied and more complicated and while they may have heard of funds from their family or friends or neighbors or social media they don't know what is right for them and i think here is where a mutual fund intermediary whether an advisor or distributor can help you take a very valuable next step in taking this idea of mutual funds and helping you build an asset allocation and a portfolio that works for you and then guiding you on how to use mutual funds to use your goals because finally mutual fund is a little bit like that old children's toy lego it's a tool you build what makes sense for you and i think that architect can be a mutual fund distributor who can work with you uh, so that is something that we very strongly believe Exactly. I can I can see uh, Sanjay agreeing to a, a lot of pointers that you've mentioned in this answer. But then Sanjay, I just come to you. Before that, quickly, Radhika, what to look at uh, uh, when one goes to talk to an intermediary or when one is thinking about going to an intermediary to make any financial investment purchase? So I think uh, you know choosing an intermediary is a very well thought out decision, and I give the analogy that. the same kind of things you would look at in a doctor in a family doctor you should look at in a financial intermediary to me i think there are two parts to this one is trust you know money is finally a business of trust and you have to absolutely trust the person that you are talking to so i always tell investors when they're talking to intermediaries you know when you're talking to an intermediary this should not be someone who's trying to sell you a product this one this should be someone who's trying to ask you questions about your financial personality about your financial goals and then building a solution that works for you just like medical advice the right medical advice is the right one that is right for your body the right financial advice is the one that is right for your financial conditions and so that is the first element trust and the ability to understand you listen to you and work around you the second element is competence of course in any medical professional for instance you look at competence and i think the intermediary is knowledge of markets market instruments mutual fund instruments instruments even outside mutual funds you know one of the things that has happened in a market like india kavita since 2003 is financial products have evolved so much in fact mutual funds have evolved so much at once one time you used to have only actively managed equity funds and fixed income funds now you have etfs index funds smart beta funds international funds china funds debt passive funds so the mutual fund intermediaries knowledge and competence needs to shine through finally you need someone who understands market who understands the and and finance is a technical professional it's if this is not selling makeup so i think that element of competence is extremely important these are the single two things i would look for when i choose an intermediary all right uh, sanjay 
I'm sure you echo most of the things that Radhika is uh, highlighting over here. And also, what I also want to understand from you is actually the way intermediaries work. You know, they play a very crucial role when it comes to invest education. That's clearly established. But then, uh, uh, what is crucial in the kind of services uh, that intermediaries uh, provide? Uh, uh, what is the kind of expectation an investor should be ha uh, having uh, from an intermediary? And which Radhika said, definitely I'll fully agree with her as far as the, the importance of advisors. And I can tell you frankly, the advisor plays a very, very important role in the life of investors because they starting from assessing the requirement to constructing the portfolio, doing the proper asset allocations, probably making sure that investor remain uh, probably hooked to his goal in spite of there being a turbulent times, whether you are talking about the market up cycle or the down cycle. I think periodically assessing and rebalancing the portfolio based on his requirement. I think when as you are reaching closer to your goal, goal probably you start uh, uh, tilting your portfolio towards uh, more debt instruments so that your portfolio doesn't uh, get impacted by sudden volatility. So there are n number of activities which advisor plays in the life of uh, investors. So when you choose an advisor probably you need to keep in mind that whether the advisor has that kind of experience or not, whether advisor is capable enough to uh, do the proper risk, risk assessment and the uh, portfolio allocation or not, whether he is probably using the technology effectively or not. Same way what Radhika said is that now the mutual fund alone may not suffice the requirement of uh, uh, investors. Frankly, I believe mutual fund is a very, very prominent product, but still, you should be able to take care of your taxation aspect, your protection requirement like your uh, term plan or health insurance or probably. So overall, probably we believe that the advisor stroke mutual fund distributors has to play a very holistic role when dealing with the uh, investor. Sure. Uh uh, Sanjay, if you uh, just want to go back and uh, help us understand how the entire uh, concept of intermediary has also changed. Uh, I will be asking questions later on about the penetration and the kind of reach that intermediaries have. But then so far, if you just go back five years back, okay, uh, uh, how has the entire setup changed? If, if through example, you could just explain this to us. So frankly, if you look at, there is a strong cult which has developed in the country about SIP. I can tell you, frankly, maximum credit goes to the uh, entire IFA community or the mutual fund distributor community who played a very, very huge role of, of bringing retail investor uh, to the SIP as a big instrument. Overall, if you look at in last five years, the share of IFA stroke mutual fund distributors in the overall asset uh, management or the AUM, that share is now upward of 50%, which used to be less than 50%. So I think they play a very, very huge role of bringing money uh, in the overall uh, scheme of the thing. If you look at the overall equity, which is a very, very strong from the point of retail investors for a wealth creation, maximum contribution of uh, retail IFA comes in the equity and the hybrid segment. So retail participation, penetration, I think the creating a cult of SIP uh, to the ground level, IFA played a very, very important role in the last five years. And I can tell you, frankly, in the last five years, because the wave uh, entire product basket and the availability is increasing, the need of uh, uh, intermediation and uh, having the good quality advice on your side is becoming very, very prominent now. Hmm. All right, let's move on. And Radhika, uh, let's talk about penetration and reach. Now, uh, specifically talking about small and mid towns and B30 towns, uh, how are these places faring? You know, especially since the pandemic, we've seen the awareness really. Uh, the entire scenario has changed. Uh, uh, what are the factors and how far have we come? A lot really needs to uh, be done over here. Uh, but uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, aim that, you know, jointly people like you and me have over here, you know, a broader picture of uh, uh, on financial literacy. Uh, this is probably the first chapter that we are on. Uh, how do you see it faring? And uh, what, what, what are the expectations also of the people uh, generally in B30 towns? So I think there are a few things. One is that, look, India is becoming more aspirational and that aspiration doesn't sit in tier one and tier two cities. So if you look at the B30 investor now, he or she is aware of mutual funds. Thanks to programs like mutual funds, yes, so many fintechs platforms coming out. The awareness about financial instruments, about market wealth creation, about mutual funds, this has definitely increased. So aspirational level, aspiration levels, whether it's career or money, have gone up in all parts of India, including B30. In fact, when we look at mutual fund industry data for substantial periods, we see that while the base is smaller, B30 
P30 is growing at a faster pace than P30. That, so that is happening. And the growth, I think fintech platforms, to give them credit, have done a wonderful job in sort of democratizing access to these things. So you no longer need a platform. Uh, you no longer need to fill up forms and do this. This all can be done digitally. So I think access and awareness are not a problem. What we do need, however, is that when people are coming in from these cities to mutual funds, they come in the right way. So, you know, finally, I think an investor will make money in the market if they stay for long enough and enjoy the benefits of compounding. That longevity will only happen if you've got the right kind of advice, if you've chosen the right products, if you've been handheld to stay through different market conditions. And that's where some of you know, the fact that investors who are not fully aware are coming in without advice from these markets sometimes is concerning. So I always tell this group of investors that please look out for a good intermediary in your market. And believe me, I travel a lot of the country. They do exist. They are coming up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same question to you, Sanjay. How do you see B30 towns uh, coming up? And uh, uh, in fact, when it comes to beating uh, uh, the, the urban areas also, what's the kind of investor we are looking at? Uh, uh, what are their interest areas? Look at overall B30, as Radhika said, I think that segment or even B50, beyond 30 cities or beyond 50 cities. I think participation has been increasing at a rapid pace. But however, we feel that the, these are the guys who has been participating regularly through SIP. So overall, SIP numbers are also increasing very, very fast uh, in beyond 30 cities. And I can look at my number also. The participation in, of retail through SIP in the beyond 30 cities is increasing very, very fast. However, for us to have the significant growth of retail investors in the mutual fund industry, I believe fleet on street like uh, the mutual fund distributors, that number is hardly about 1,35,000 today in the country. Again, that if you look at, there are almost 21 lakh insurance agents. So if we want that more and more people should come into a financialization where you have a beautiful product like uh, mutual fund and beautiful ve vehicle like SIP, I think, I think everybody, probably we also play a, a significant role. Radhika and MV also plays a very important role. We need to make sure number of players who advise the people and bring them into the investment side has to increase manifold from here. So I wish today we have one like 35,000 mutual fund distributors as an agent. That number has to go up at least five to seven times in uh, times to come. Then only we'll be able to have a significant uh, growth from uh, that side. Another thing, uh, thanks to entire digital ecosystem, which has been changing very, very fast, I think the uh, the in convenience of investing is now very, very easy, whether you talk about onboarding or starting the SIB through Natch or probably looking the portfolio on the platform, execution through the click of the button. So probably everything is now right as far as uh, execution and the investments are concerned. What is requirement, uh, what we require very seriously is handholding of those people to make sure they invest in the right direction and they remain committed to their goal and probably we can bring more and more people to the fold. Also, uh, Sanjay, uh, could you also explain us the current uh, cost structure that uh, uh, investors uh, need to understand maybe? So probably if you look at the cost of intermediation is roughly in the range of on the equity and hybrid side, I believe is in the range of 80, 85 basis points, which includes 18% GST also. So uh, if you invest through distributors, there will be a distributor commission, which is paid by the manufacturer directly to us. If you go to AMC directly, then you'll save that cost, which is hardly about 70, 75 basis points. However, when you look at the cost, you need to be mindful of the fact also that again, that cost are are distributor able to generate alpha for us or not? Are, are, uh, investor, are distributor able to generate the extra return for the investor or not? And I can you there are n number of research which is available in the developed market like US. I can just give a reference to one of the research which has been conducted by Merrill Lynch, which they talk about as the value of personal financial advice and they bucket it. So if you look at the role which advisor is expected to play would be starting from assessing the requirement to let's say asset allocations, probably coaching the customer Customers or doing the behavioral coaching or tax management. Probably, I think very, very important thing would be the tax management. Probably making sure.
ensure that customer remain committed to his goal. Then the allocation among the various asset class. So these all things put together, I think that Merrill Lynch report says that the advisor generate the alpha in the range of probably 250 basis point to 350 basis point. I'm talking about two and a half percent to three and a half percent. So against that average alpha, which advisors generate about 300 basis point, I think 80 basis point is not a cost which somebody should keep in mind. And I'm, I, can, I can tell you, these are the research of a developed market like US. And in case of India, still there is a huge need for us to people to bring into the market. So I think there is a lot of discussion about the distribution cost, but I believe that cost is not significantly larger. I can tell you another way also. Today, if you look at the country, there is hardly about 18, 20,000 distributors who has the AM of more than 10 crore who make serious money. So there is a really, we have a need for us to increase the number of advisors who can also make meaningful money. All right, Radhika. Uh, now, there will be a second uh, consultation paper on TER. Uh, we just want to understand what exactly was the representation done from the industry side that the SEBI chairman said the industry would be very happy to see the uh, second uh, uh, consultation paper or the changes that we made. Uh, 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 what changes were proposed and uh, what could be the new form? Okay, so I think firstly, uh, you know, as an industry, I think we should be very happy that this is truly TER, which is such an important decision for our industry, has truly been a consultative process. Uh, as Chairperson said, because you know this was price sensitive information, a particular draft of the consultation paper came out. Thereafter, the industry responded with feedback. I think most importantly, the industry responded with a lot of data to hopefully answer the regulator's questions. We are very happy that that has been heard. Uh, and a new consultation is paper is coming out, you know, without going into specific too many details of what the industry said. I think what we've done is bring out data. For instance, the fact, let me give you an example that the chairperson also alluded to so that this is reasonably public information. The fact that arbitrage funds do a high degree of churn. Now that churn is not necessarily bad churn. It is done because you believe that you will generate higher interest and buy sell buy sell is just the nature of the product so i think the industry's job as practitioners is to highlight nuances uh, and then both the industry and regulators interests is to work together finally for the growth of the industry you recall at our um, amphi office inauguration uh, you know uh, chairperson had called us uh, the bada beta of the industry and said that mutual funds are the best instrument of uh, saving or investing for uh, the ordinary Indian. So I think we're all working towards that objective. Uh, so Radhika, again, uh, in continuity uh, to the previous question, so uh, what kind of changes would you think uh, investors uh, would be interested in seeing or investor-friendly changes that one should, ex should be expecting? So, you know, it, it is hard to say till we see the consultation paper. All we have is one consultation paper uh, and, uh, you know, some of the publicly made statements after the uh, press conference. I think from an investor point of view, there has genuinely been nothing to worry. If I look at the last 10 years of regulatory changes, mutual funds have only gotten cheaper in terms of expense ratio. In fact, as schemes have scaled, the benefit of scale has passed on to investors. Mutual funds have gotten substantially more transparent in terms of the kind of disclosures uh, that are out there. And a lot of risk practices, particularly in fixed income, uh, you know, on insider trading, conflict of interest, a lot of good risk in governance practices have been put in place. So I think this is an industry that has gotten more and more regulated, uh, but in the right direction. And I think finally, the fact that we are now almost a 45 lakh crore industry is also a product of the fact that regulation has made us the kind of product that we are. Uh, Sanjay, your expectation from the second consultation paper, what kind of relief uh, are intermediaries expecting? What kind of representation was done from your end also? I think I believe probably, uh, uh, I think we also expect that I think the new version which will come would be very, very diluted one. And uh, one important thing which I just wanted to highlight, the chairperson has already admitted when there was a press conference, conference saying that the benefit of scale has already been transferred to the investors when they looked at the actual data. We are just going through the one of the presentations which has been made by FIFA to the CB, where it has been categorically said by the FIFA that whatever has been the reduction in the cost 
cost has been borne by the mutual fund distributor, so which was about 9, 10 basis point after significant TR cut came in uh, April 2019. So whatever the benefit which has been required to be transferred has already been transferred to the uh, investor. And the problem, so frankly, I think what we have to look at with reference to the global best practices and the global cost structure, keeping in mind the size of the industry. So if you look at the 45 lakh crore industry and on the equity side, if you earn about 85 basis point and if you take out that GST, I think the earning is not in the range of 70, 75 basis points. So probably I believe there is a, there is there is there has not been a significant scope for the reduction in the TR. What is required would be streamlining some of the things which which is there in the mind of CB to make it all inclusive. There should not be anything outside the uh, specified TR. If that comes without significant uh, damage to the current structure, we all would love to welcome that. All right, uh, last question to Radhika and then we wrap up the discussion. Radhika, uh, what kind of intermediaries awareness programs uh, do you as an AMC also conduct you know, in order to achieve the goal of financial literacy? Absolutely, and I'll just point out two points. Is you know, One, our team is always uh, on the road. In fact, uh, you know, I myself am often on the road. Uh, and you know, intermediaries are partners of AMCs. We we think of them that way. And uh, you know, to work with them, in fact, to train them on uh, how to showcase our products in the right way, how to use mutual funds as a general tool for investors is something that's very important. You know, there's a second initiative that we've been doing every 31st of March. We declare it Financial Intermediaries Day. This uh, year, we also released a very important report called the Cogs, which was a tribute to the intermediary profession. And in fact, one of the most important things I must point out, the insight of the report was that if you look at longevity of investors and investors have, that have stayed for more than two years of our assets, of idealized mutual fund assets, the number, when you look at assets that came from intermediaries was well in excess of 30% versus direct investors, which was 14%. So it's also sort of proving to the investor community that there is a benefit that intermediaries are giving you if you are choosing to seek advice. So that is a very important initiative of Edelweiss Mutual Fund, the whole financial intermediation day, and that's going to continue and grow. All right, I think that will be all. Thank you so much, Radhika and Sanjay, being on the show and helping our viewers with every aspect of uh, mutual fund intermediaries. Thank you so much. All right, we move on in tonight's episode of IDFC First Bank Presents Leaders of Tomorrow. As part of our Wealth First special, we unveil the intricacies of the financial sector. In the first segment, Rajesh Saluja, CEO, Managing Director, uh, ASK Private Wealth, shares his insights on the Hurun India Report 2023 and further highlights the right tools for wealth management. In the second segment, uh, Anand Ladha, founder, Invest Archfokal, elaborates on topics like uh, debt management, borrowings, and much more. Listen. In. <laughs> 